Hello to the people of YouTube, it's me Tifal Wilderness, welcome to my channel and welcome to this month's end of the month bot haul where I'll show you all the Transformer related items that I've picked out throughout the month. Um, not got a particularly big haul this month, um, I've only got 10 purchases to show you, um, but uh, uh, some of them you might have seen reviews on, some of them you might have uh, been hinted at in my unboxing videos, but... Uh, I have uh, picked a few other bits up besides, so uh, hopefully this won't be such a long haul as uh, some of my others tend to drag out to like 45 minutes to an hour, but hopefully I'll be able to keep this one short and sweet. So, with that being said, let's uh, let's get started, shall we? So, I do this in chronological order, the uh, order in which the, uh, the, uh, the bots came in after purchase, so uh, the first bot to come in arrived on the uh, 2nd of March, because I ordered him on the 1st from uh, Hasbro Pulse. It's my first uh, Transformers Legacy figure, and it is Transformers Legacy Bulkhead. So yeah, I decided to go for this guy. Um, they had him in stock. They're still waiting on stock for the uh, the rest of the, uh, the Wave 1 Legacy figures, though I will probably be getting skids, maybe drag strip, I don't know. Pro I don't know about um, kickback. Uh, you know, I'm definitely not Laser Optimus Prime, but anyway, so yeah, Bulkhead. Um, yeah, so when this thing was announced, um, some people were excited because they were thinking that you know the Legacy line is a line where it's kind of like Generations, where they they can pluck any character from any Transformers fiction over the you know 35 odd odd years it's been going and make a new toy of it. And uh, as it's been 10 years since Transformers Prime, there's probably thinking, oh, we're going to get a new Voyager bulkhead. Uh, yeah, you are getting a new Voyager bulkhead, but he's not in a Transformers Prime style. And um, if, as I remember right, uh, Hasbro Pulse, when they put up the listing of this, they said it was um, a uni legacy uh, universe prime bulkhead or something like that. They used the words universe and prime in his in his name. So people were thinking it was going to be like a, a rework of the Transformers Prime bulkhead. But when the toy actually came out, it's just Legacy Bulkhead. There was no other moniker with his name. It's just Legacy Bulkhead. And um, obviously the Prime fans are a little upset about it. You know, upset that they, they've restyled him in this this manner. And uh, so I can understand that, and I sympathise with those sort of fans. But my my take on this guy is that um, this is Bulkhead before Transformers Prime. Now they're trying to say that this is how he would have looked in you know Transformers G1, and Transformers G1 was during the 1980s. So let's say Bulkhead came to Earth as a as a protoform, you know, meteor that that crash landed on Earth, and let's say he landed in the Eastern Bloc or Russia during the Cold War, because that was still rumbling on in the 1980s. And uh, so he would have you know, been looking for you know, a vehicle to scan for his alt mode and sees a, a Russian military truck driving by and scans it and takes on this alt mode. So you could say that this is how Bulkhead would have looked had he been a G1 character. So that's my take on the theory as why Bulkhead has, has got this alt mode. Um, yeah, he transforms into a, a military truck, which is somewhat similar to, you know, sort of, uh, you know, sort of uh, European or you know, Russian military trucks, especially during the Cold War. Um, he's, he's a decent figure. He's got quite an involved transformation. Um, he's pretty cool. He, he looks like Bulkhead. Um, some people are a bit, they think the whole, you know, cab chest is a little bit overkill. Uh, but... Uh, He's got the chunk and the bulk for Bulkhead. He, uh, you also have that thing where you can put on his arm, where you can put the wrecking ball on his arm as well. The uh, you've got the the, uh, the 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 sort of the cowl on the back, which you can remove. Um, it, it does un unplug, and it can become you know, like a riot shield that he can have on on, on his arm. Um, he's a decent figure. He's really good. Um, my first dip into the Legacy line. Um, he's all right. He's okay. Um, you know, you look round him. He, he, I suppose, he has got a little bit of hollowness in his in, inside, but uh, the cab, you know, covers mo covers it up for the most part. Um, he's okay. I, I like him. I don't regret buying him. Um, he looks okay. Yeah, he doesn't look like Transformers Prime Bulkhead, but then again, he's not supposed to be Transformers Prime Bulkhead. Or well, that's the way I see it. Anyway, he's supposed to be an earlier ver version of, of uh, Bulkhead. Had Bulkhead been around in the 1980s during G1, then you know he might have taken on this form. So, 
Transformers Prime Bulkhead, first purchase this month that arrived. He's all right, he's pretty good, I like him. Right, so next it was a comic, um, placed a couple of comic orders. Um, obviously IDW is gonna be losing the license later this year, so I'm the only comic I'm getting is the, is the Beast Wars comic. Um, I'm gonna run it out until it ends. And as we're like, you know, a quarter of the way through the year, then you know, this thing obviously hasn't got that many issues left to go. So anyway, so next issue arrived. Issue 13, got this, this particular cover with uh, some uh, artwork of Rhinox transforming. That's pretty cool. This issue is a bit weird. Um, basically, it's it's Cheetor. Cheetor's been injured in a battle, and he's he's sort of in the CR chamber, and he's been he's having a fever dream as he's been you know, repaired, and uh, he's, you know, he's, he's unconscious, and he thinks he's back on Cybertron um, before the mission started, and he's he, he gets accosted by this bot because he's he's a, he because he's a famous racer on Cybertron. You know, he's known for being really fast and racing. And then this other bot comes up and says, "Oh, I, I, I challenge you to a race." And then he transforms into Blur, and then he, he shoots off into the distance. And then it turns out that uh, this bot that uh, was was you know sort of racing with him isn't actually Blur. It's 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 actually one of the Vok posing as a bot, and he's basically going into his mind and trying to steal you know secrets from the maximals and uh, he hacks into you know um Cheetor's mind and steals some information about the um the protoforms and the um the uh, you know the uh, and the stasis chambers that are in orbit and this will come into play in the next issue so it was an, an interesting story it, it sort of diverted from the main plot that's going on so i didn't enjoy it that much it was interesting but um yeah bit weird, a bit unusual, but uh, it was an okay issue, I suppose. Okay, next. Right. Now, this next one, the first KTRT that arrived this month. Now, if you watched my haul last month, you know I had a bit of trouble trying to get a particular figure out of G-Market. Yeah, I placed a, a multi-bot order last month for three figures. Uh, two figures off one seller and another figure off a, a, a second seller. The other figure I got to second seller turn round the next day, cancelled my order, gave me a refund, and when I looked into it, they were crying wolf and saying it was out of stock. So I was a bit disgruntled about this. I went ahead, went back onto G-Market, ordered the same figure again, unknowingly from the same seller, because I wasn't looking at the seller's name, because it was all in Korean, I bought the same figure off the same seller, two days on the trot, different or uh, an item number because when I went in and checked the item numbers they were different and I got the same result second two days on the trot the seller cancelled my order refunded me my money now because I, the first order was integrated into you know, like, a, like a, a basket order with two other items from another seller I applied a load of vouchers and and uh, you know and money saving things to it and when the order the order went through um, because one of the items got removed from it, I got stitched up on the shipping and I lost money on the shipping. So it, it cost me money to get this that bot. Anyway, moving forward to this month, uh, well, needless to say, all that palaver that happened last month really upset me. I mean, I was absolutely fuming, especially the second time my order got cancelled. I was spitting feathers. I was really upset. And uh, it, it totally ruined my opinion of this figure and I still wanted to get it because I said to myself I'm going to get all the figures from the Hello Carbot uh, Samba toy line and this was one of the ones that I was missing so I had to get him. So this month went ahead bought him very carefully from another seller make sure they had it in stock and uh, and the price and I I, I mean this this set uh, this figure as well he also for some reason he's sold out in most places those few people who've got it online are asking you know scalper money for it or you know sort of like aftermarket premiums so he goes for like sometimes one and a half to two times the amount that the other figures go for so you've got to take that into into account so anyway finally got him done a review on him and an unboxing hello carbots max dozer now because of all the shit I had last month trying to get hold of one of these, it really ruined my opinion of the toy. But I will say, before I even bought it, I wasn't a huge fan of the look of this guy in, in robot mode. Now, if you take his Samba animal off the back, 
and obviously take those off as well. Look at his basic sort of robot mode. And he transforms into a kind of weird looking bulldozer. And, and I think his robot mode is very atypical of what a construction bot should look like. It's very, you know, if, if anybody was to design a robot from a construction vehicle, this is what you'd end up with. He's, he's, he's very bland, very plain, you know, very by the numbers. And I wasn't a fan with the look of the thing. Of course, you get his Sambra animal, who's a gorilla, and he plugs into the back. And he, you get these big buckets over his shoulders, and then you get the, the drill things in his hand. And he does look a bit better. He does look a bit better when you do that. But, you know, he's still... I'm still not a huge fan of him. His bulldozer looks weird. His robot mode looks very, 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 you know, sort of plain and basic. And, and, and you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a bit by the numbers. And uh, I wasn't a huge fan of it. And then to have all that crap go on, trying to get one last month where I lost money, got screwed around by a seller on G Market, it's really, really ruined my opinion of this thing. It's an okay toy, I suppose. Um, because of the way the... Um, his alt mode works. Um, his Samba animal, he's like back to front to all the other, well, most of the other Samba animals. So when, well, Samba characters. So when you swap and change his, uh, you know, his uh, his Samba, Samba animal off the back and plug it onto the other figures, it doesn't quite work that well with most of them because, you know, he's back to front. Um, I mean, um, Rock Can's the same. He's back to front as well because the others, the... Um, the feet of the uh, the robot is usually the, the the cab of the vehicle, and the, the head and the arms is the back of the vehicle. But this guy's the other way round. So because of that, his, his samba animal, his samba gimmick doesn't work that well with the others. However, there is a couple of bots it does work with extremely well. Works quite well with Night Hopper. Works exceptionally well with um, uh, what's his name, um, um, Red Weiler, because when you take this off the back. And stick that onto Red Weiler. It looks like the um, looks like the tackle on the back of a, a, a highway wrecker. You know, like the big boom that highway wreckers have when they they're recovering trucks off the motorway. It, it looks like one of those, and, and it looks really awesome. So yeah, that's the one good thing I can say about this is that he's Samba animal. When you combine it with some of the um, the other you know Samba bots, it does look okay. It looks looks really good on one of them particularly, but on his own. Like I said, I don't care much for the aesthetic. I had a lot of grief with him. So I will tell you up front, this guy last month booked his worst bot of the month place. And yeah, spoilers for later on, worst bot this month. Yeah, I don't mind saying it now. So yeah, that happened. Got finally got hold of him. And he's the last of the basic uh, Samba figures that I've bought. The, the six basic Samba figures. There is a combiner I need to get, which is what I will be pulling the trigger on that tomorrow. But also, the Season 12 trailer for Hello Carbot Season 12 dropped like last week. Um, Hello Carbot Bomber. Um, yeah, and the, the toy line's been announced. And some of the toys, the Wave 1 of the toys, are out on G Market already. I noticed one of the figures is Carbot Hawk X, and Carbot Hawk from season one is one of my favourite Carbot characters from the original series. They've done a rework of him. He's now he's now a triple changer. You know he's got he's got his, his, his blue you know sort of car mode. He's got his robot mode, and then he can turn into kind of a robotic bird, kind of like um, uh, the Mini Force Raybot that I reviewed. Um, yeah, so. The sellers on G Market have got it up already. Uh, Loranja is, is is another figure from the toy line. She's a fembot, but she transforms from a little, little sort of like a dark blue, sort of lowered, sort of you know sort of you know sort of hatchback car into you know like a big dark blue and uh, orange and well yellow bot. Uh, she's on on there as well. So I'm thinking. I mean, obviously I've got, I've got to get the combiner tomorrow, but I'm thinking of throwing down on at least one of the uh, the new. Uh, Carbot Season 12 figures tomorrow. We'll have to wait and see about that. So they might be getting them next month. Anyway, moving along. So um, obviously Legacy Bulkhead arrived on the 2nd. The um, My comic, um, my first comic arrived on the 4th. Hello Carbot Max Dozer arrived on the 9th. Right, right, we're up to speed right. Now, the next thing. Um, 
Fisto Yeti, um, he did a video and uh, he'd got hold of the uh, Cyberverse uh, Bumblebee Adventures Deluxe Class uh, Slug, which is their you know Dinobot figure. And uh, he apparently imported it from overseas and paid a pretty penny for it. But uh, he did a review on it and he's quite impressed with it. And I thought, oh, yeah, I'd like to get hold of one of those. But, uh, you know, you'll probably never see them go on sale in the UK because they're late wave Cyberverse figures and they'll never make it to UK shores. Anyway, literally a week later, I decided to have a look on eBay. And lo and behold, there's a bunch of sellers on eBay UK have got hold of this thing. They're selling it for around 20, 25 quid. So, yeah. I threw down and I got in myself. So yeah, I got Cyberverse Deluxe Slug. Um, now he's a deluxe figure. He's not a warrior figure. He's a deluxe figure. So he's got all the extra articulation. You know, he's got he's got bicep swivels. He's got waist swivels. He's got ankle tilts. He's got a waist joint. You know, he's got he's got all that going on. Warrior class figures don't have that kind of articulation, right? Um, he's a little bit bigger than a warrior as well. Um, he's got slightly more involved transformation, as you do. And uh, he looks really cool. He's got lots of spiky bits on him. Um, he looks really cool. And, and I decided I wanted to get um, the uh, Cyberverse Dinobots, or get a set of them. I've got a couple of Grimlocks already. I've got hold of the Ultra Sludge. Um, obviously, I've now got the Deluxe Slug. Need to get a snarl. There's a warrior snarl coming out, and the swoop. The swoop is one. He's in one of those those uh, crash combiner two packs with Bumblebee. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I don't know whether they're doing a warrior class or a deluxe swoop. I doubt it very much. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a very mix and match with the uh, Cyberverse Dinobots. You're going to have a couple of deluxes, an ultra, and some a uh, warrior class and a combiner thing. You know, it's. So yeah, I've got hold of him. He's really, really good. Um, this yellow, goldish yellow plastic looks a little suspect. I don't know whether that's that's gold plastic. It's got swirls in it. Um, and he's absolutely blathered in it. You know, there, there, on his arms, on his legs, it's everywhere. But you'd have thought they'd have sorted that out by now. You know, you'd have thought they'd have realised, you know, how to get gold plastic, you know, mixing the, the, the polymers so that it doesn't uh, do the GPS thing. But um, anyway... He looks really cool. He's a decent bot. Uh, great transformation. Nice and solid. No loose joints on this guy. Um, yeah, he looks cool. And he's, he's a great little figure. And I just wish they'd do the rest of the Dinobots in the Deluxe class. But it ain't going to happen. I'm telling you that now. So, anyway, at least I got him. So, that was that. And that arrived on the 10th. Right, next day. Now, another thing... Uh, Going back a little bit to the, the grief I had last month buying, um, you know, uh, um, trying to buy Max Dozer off that seller on um, G Market last month and having my order cancelled because the seller refused. Well, seller was claiming it was out of stock, even though he relisted the item under a different number. Why would he relist it if it was out of stock? And when I bought the first one i had a message come up on screen saying there was limited stock available but there was still stock available and i reckon the seller pulled a fast one refused to ship to me in the uk and uh, you know tried to use the low stock as a, as a reasons to say there was no stock and you know cancel my order anyway so i wanted to buy this month i wanted to buy obviously i got this guy he's the last um he's the last you know car bot um, Samba basic figure that I just need to get the combiner but he's quite expensive so I'll be buying him next month so I, I needed another car bot to fill up my two you know, Korean toy a month quota and I was looking at, back at some older sort of car bot figures that I passed over and there's these these giant these large egg bots that they do and um, the one I was looking at getting was a Brontero Big Coon and uh, Coon is the, um, the, the uh, Korean word for egg so is Brontero Big Egg. And um, I tried to get hold of one of those. And I went for the cheapest one that was on the site. And then, yeah, the same thing happened. My order got cancelled. I got my money refunded. But this time I got a bunch of emails from G Market explaining we apologise. You know, your order is out of stock. So we've had to cancel your order, blah, 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 blah. And when I looked into it, when I looked into the seller that I bought it from, 
It turns out that when I went into the seller's shop, they did not have that item listed in their shop contents at all. In fact, they hardly had any contents in their shop. They only had about like half a dozen items in the shop and Carbot Toys wasn't one of them. They had a few Beyblade, Beyblade items in there. But um, I think what it was was a legacy listing, a leftover listing from, from you know, a while ago or a couple of years ago. They probably deleted the listing from their site, but from their shop, but it was still on the site and I went ahead and bought it and they you know, obviously they didn't have it in stock and that's how that order got refunded. I got all my money back, so no big deal. Um, I will try and get that figure at a later date, but I'm going to have to be a bit more careful when I order my figures through uh, uh, G Market now because you know I'm getting caught out by this quite a lot lately. Either it's you know, a genuine case of you know the items out of stock or the sellers pulling a fast one, you know, because they don't want to ship to me for some reason. Anyway, so I looked around and I bought another figure that I've been. It's a repaint of a uh, of a cardboard figure that I've already got, and I decided to to get it because I thought the repaint looks cool, and you know I you know I wanted to buy a second cardboard figure. So anyway, went ahead and got this guy, and uh, he arrived. On the 11th, hello Carbots Rescue Rex. Um, I reviewed him the other day. Uh, had a bit of a, a bit of a, a, bit of a problem with the video. I put it up for my usual 9:30 slot. Um, but before I put it up, when I edited the video, um, there's a there's a there's a caption in it where I'm going on about the um, the uh, the original uh, review I did for the gold the, the the orange version of Gold Rex that I did years ago in uh, was it may 2016 and uh, i put a caption on the screen saying it was like review number 66 but i put the wrong date on i put like the 3rd of march or something like that so it should have been the, the 5th of may so or the 3rd of may so i had to go into the video and correct that caption but in doing so i'd removed the the video from my channel intro and put it away in the folder where it usually lives off the desktop and i was still in the editing software so when i re-edited the video and you know rendered it and then uploaded it onto YouTube it had the my channel intro was missing there was just like 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 20 seconds of black at the beginning of the video so uh, it was up for a couple of hours it got like 16 views and then then um king of the potato people I'm giving you a shout out mate uh, you put a comment on it it says oh I don't like your new channel intro or something and uh, so when I went and looked at it I thought oh shit where's me where's my channel intro gone so I had to hastily re-edit the video and re-upload it, and then I waited until the replacement video got the same amount of views as the uh, the original video, and then I deleted the old video. So it wasted 16 views, and it took the second video like nearly a full day to get that amount of views. It was ridiculous. Anyway, so this guy. Now, it's a repaint of a car bot. It's... And they did this quite a lot, especially in the early days. Um, in seasons one and two, they did a, a bunch of repaints. And then in, I think season two and three as well. This guy's, I think, from season three. Is it season three or four? Anyway, so you had the original version, and then they did this repainted version. Um, the thing about the, the repainted car bots, they look great, but these are big, expensive bots. They cost like you know, 45, 50, 60 quid to buy and import from Korea for me. And spending that sort of money to get a repaint of a mould you've already got is difficult to justify. So I, I sort of passed on these repaints that they did. But um, because I was looking to buy another car bot, and I was, I, I was looking at this guy, and I, I absolutely love the original version of Gold Rex. I absolutely adore him. He's an amazing figure. But I thought this version looks pretty cool as well, so I decided to get it. And, uh, yeah, so... Uh, Went and bought it, got it from Global H Mall, did I? I think, yes. Uh, I'm going to be buying a lot of stuff from them lately. I mean, they've got um, they've got that, uh, that Hello Carbot uh, you know, Samba combiner in stock, and they've also got uh, Hello Carbot um, Bumba, you know, Hawk X in stock as well. So I will probably be buying them from uh, Global H Mall tomorrow. And they're a trusted seller. You know, I've bought a bunch of stuff from them. They've got the stuff in in stock that I want. Their prices aren't the cheapest on G Market, but they're they're still better than the majority of the competition. So I'd rather buy from a trusted seller, who I know will deliver the goods, you know, in a timely manner, than you know go for the cheapest from an unknown seller who might turn around and uh, you know screw me off, and say you know oh, I'm not shipping to you because you live in the wrong country. Here's your money back, you know, and cancel your order. So anyway, yeah, so. <laughs> 
I've been thinking about getting this guy. Uh, Gold Rex Rescue, or Rescue Rex as I prefer to call him. Red repaint of Gold Rex. He looks really cool. Um, love this mold. Robotic Dragon. Um, transforms from an, an off-road buggy. So works for me in so many different ways. Um, I do prefer the original orange version to this version though, but this version still looks really, really cool in these colours. It, it, it's a totally different take on the figure. The you know, the original one's mostly orange and a, and a bit of white and some black, but this one is like, it's like so much red, so much white, you know, it just pops so much harder in these colours. And you've got the transparent yellow, you know, you know claws, and uh, he's he's amazing, he's awesome. <laughs> I love this thing. Um, yeah, so again, expensive repaint. Um, I can't remember how much I paid for this. Um, I'm sure it was around like fifty odd quid. So it's, it's it's a lot of money, but he's he's a big bot. I mean, as I showed in my review, you know, he, he's bigger than you know leader class Megatron. You know, he he's a big bot. I mean, look how much bigger he is than uh, the Max Dozer. You know, you know, he's 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 a, he's a big boy, and and he's cool. Um, Engineering on this thing, it's the same as the original toy, though I think some of the joints are a little looser on this because I think this is the the fourth time this mould has been used, so it's getting a bit of mould deg degradation. But he, he looks cool, he's an awesome figure. I, uh, you know, I really, uh, really like him. And, uh, yep, yeah, so I decided to get him. <laughs> so I got him and uh, done a review on him and uh, had a bit of trouble putting it out because uh, that uh, problem I had with the intro. But, uh, yeah, Gold Rex Rescue or Rescue Rex, he's a cool figure. And uh, glad I got him. So he arrived on the 11th. Right, so then, then it was... Um, you know, middle of the month, um, looking at uh, getting some other things. And, uh, well, I, I'd placed an order for something on uh, AliExpress. Um, last month, I avoided AliExpress because of the Chinese New Year. and uh, But this month, there was a couple of things on there that I was looking to buy. And there was, I saw somebody do a review of this, this strange combiner figure. Uh, I can't remember who it was. And it looked really interesting, and I wanted to get it myself. And when I looked on... Um, looked on... AliExpress, I, I, could, I couldn't really find it. And then I found like one seller that was doing it. And I decided to buy it. And it's the... Um, it's this. It's the uh, Zinli Zin Magic Classroom Space Morphers. Um, you know, um, Space Combiner. Um from the uh, China Aerospace Museum. So, yeah, it's it's. I believe this this figure set is made specifically for sale in the gift shop at the uh, the Chinese Space Museum, and uh, all the robots that make up the combiner are based on assets, from, well, mostly based on assets from the you know, the Chinese Space Administration, like um, the Long March rocket, or that rover that's or one of those rovers that's either on the moon or the, the Mar or Mars. Um, uh, there's a there's a satellite looking thing which kind of looks like that space station they've just put up. Um, you know, there's a shuttle which is a bit weird because China haven't got a shuttle and America had the only one that that actually flew regularly and Russians have got a shuttle but it's you know the Buran got abandoned you know and poor thing. Anyway, so went ahead and bought it and it arrived and uh, yeah, so. <sighs> Here it is. Right. <laughs> now, it looks pretty cool in combiner mode. And it's made up out of five units. You've got the shuttle, the rover, the rocket, the station. These are just brand, you know, uh, random names I'm giving them. And the um, transmitter. Because this trans transforms into a like a, a, a satellite dish, um, space station or satellite rocket you know long march rocket you know lunar rover and shuttle now the individual bots the engineering on them is a bit mm, it's a bit of a mixed bag some of them are all right some of them not so much um the, the ratchets are very coarse um the uh, the way some of them transforms is a bit awkward 
Um, the best one of the bunch is the the shuttle guy. Um, he when he transforms into robot mode, he looks a lot like um, Astro Train in his robot mode. And as you can say he looks like Astro Train in the shuttle mode, but he doesn't have a train mode. But he t he turns into a combiner leg instead. Um, but uh, he's half decent. He has does does have a loose elbow. But apart from that, and but the other thing is, it's like when you're trying to pose this guy, and you sort of bend the knee, that happens. The uh, the mold splits, so that's not good. Um, so, and then this guy hasn't even got a working knee, and this thing keeps falling off the back as well when you're trying to handle him. It's like, like the the booster bit off the top of the the rocket. It goes on there, but. Um, yeah, so this thing doesn't hold together very well. It's not the most articulated thing. When you're handling it, it bits fall off. Uh, and it's, it's not great. I mean, you've got these weird, weird sort of hand things that, that it's got. It looks cool, but unfortunately, the, the, like the, the engineering on certain bits and the design of it in certain places is... is, is subpar you know but i don't think this is designed as a serious transforming toy it's just designed as a, as a novelty item that they sell in the gift shop in the you know the, the, the chinese space museum um it's okay i mean i paid just over 50 quid for it shipped uh i don't regret buying it but you know the the, the best way i can describe this set is it well especially the combiner is that it, it's um it's not, you know, not equal to the sum of its parts. Let's put it that way. Um, it's it's really weird. I mean, like this one hasn't even got a working knee. Then, <laughs> like, you see, you try to move the leg and it comes off. Like the knee goes in and out, but it doesn't go backwards and forwards because of the way the uh, the mold is, is 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 done. So yeah, it's 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 not great. I mean, I was going to show you the bots individually, but I thought, well, to save time on this video, I'll just show you the combiner. It's not fantastic. Um, it has some issues. It looks kind of cool, but you know, it's 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 really not that great. Um, the best thing about this set is the manual, because <laughs> it's got it's got like you know, it's like a full color manual with with you know, proper photographic illustrations, very large you know sort of panels, so you can see exactly what's going on. You know, it, it's it's a, it's a very very good manual, but it's all in Chinese. There's hardly any English on it. You know, so difficult to understand what's being said. But still, a very good manual. And it's the best thing about this set is the manual. So, yeah. So there was that. That arrived. Um, next, right then. NEC Toy Fair. Um, NEC Toy Fair this month on um, the twentieth, Sunday the twentieth. Um, I wanted to go. I wanted to take some extra cash with me, even though it would have meant going over budget this month. Um, and uh, so went to the NEC. Got my uh, my uh, um, early bird ticket, as as you do when you go to the NEC Toy Fair. And uh, like I said, now before the actual event, um, I'd contacted one of the dealers or sellers at the at the um, NEC Toy Fair. It's a, a, a guy called Darren who works at the King Street Collectibles shop in Wolverhampton. And he usually has a stall halfway along the left-hand wall. And uh, I've bought stuff from him in the past. And uh, I can remember going back to September 2019. Um, I bought that um, Transformers Go Hishumaru um orange bird boss off him and um, it was an absolute bag of shit <laughs> to be honest so I really regret buying that thing but um, he also had the uh, the purple shark the uh, Senshumaru bot on the, on, the, on, the, on the store and in recent times remember last month I got hold of that um, I got hold of the uh, the the um, the, the blue lion bot, um, uh, Geki Sumaru, and he's amazing. And it made me want to get the rest of the figures to make the combiner, so I only needed the purple shark bot to, to complete the combiner. So I rang this guy and I said, oh, no, I'm one of your customers from the NEC Toy Fair, blah, blah, blah. I remember you seeing you had this, this figure on your stall back in September 2019. Obviously, that was before the COVID shutdown. 
Um, and he said, yeah, I might still have it, but it's in the shop. So he, he went away, and then the next day he went to the shop, found it, had it still had it in stock, rang me back and says, yes, mate, I, I've still got it, so if you want it, I can put it by for you, and it'll be 45 quid. And I thought, oh, that's near enough, because if I wanted to buy this figure, you can you can buy it off the eBay sellers in, in uh, Japan, but they're asking... They're asking at least 45 quid plus postage, and postage is about 15, 20 quid. So you're talking about 65, 70 quid to get one out of Japan. So, yeah, that was good of, good of him to do that. So that was something that I set up before I actually went to the event. Anyway, so I knew I had to see this bloke, and every time I went past his stall, he wasn't there because he was out wandering around looking at other people's stalls. So, anyway, that's neither here nor there. But I did find a stall... And somebody had something of interest, a guy who'd got some Transformer stuff on his store. And I found this. Mech Ideas Gauntlet. And the best part about it was... 30 quid. Now I thought, wow, Mech Ideas Gauntlet for 30 quid. I've been after one of these for a while, but this, this figure is Major League Scalper Bait. Um... He's based on a character from the um, Last Stand of the Wreckers. He's based on um, Iron Fist or Fissidron from the Last Stand of the Wreckers. Um, Mech Ideas, which was an offshoot of um, Mastermind Creations. They they did a couple of uh, figures based on the Last Stand of the Wreckers comic. They only did four figures. They did um, Apex and Geminus, which was based on um, uh, uh, Twin Twist and Top Spin. They did Gauntlet, who was based on uh, Iron Fist, and they did uh, a repaint of this guy in, in like a dark blue and purple colour, who was um, based on Crankcase. Anyway, so I saw this, I thought 30 quid. I thought that guy must, seriously, that guy must know this thing's worth, you know, like probably four times that amount, you know. <laughs> anyway, so I bought it. I, I opened the box briefly to look to see if the figure was in there, and sure it was in there, and. Uh, when I bought it and thought, you know, a major coup, I've got you no know, Mech Ideas Gauntlet for 30 quid. Wasn't until I got home and uh, got the thing out that I realised why it was 30 quid. Now, I don't know whether this will show up on the uh, the things. It's probably not showing up on these cameras, but he is heavily yellowed. He's yellowed all around here. He's yellowed on his legs, yellowed on his backpack. I mean, the arms aren't yellow because they're painted, but he's like really, really badly yellowed. Um, I don't know whether you can see it there. It's probably not showing up on this camera, but he's, he's like really, really badly yellowed. Really, really badly yellowed. And of course, that's the reason why he's 30 quid. So he's obviously been on, on display on somebody's shelf in the, in the view of the sun and it's, it's, baked, you know, it's baked the plastic and turned him yellow. Which is a shame, um, but that explains why it was 30 quid. Um, had I known it was yellowed, I probably still would have bought it at 30 quid because, I mean, you know, it's a chance to get hold of this. And theoretically, you can fix this. I have been trying to fix it. I mean, I've been trying to retro bright the, uh, the backpack and uh, it hasn't really worked because you can probably see there's some marks there on the plastic because where I was, um, I've stained the plastic. Uh, trying to do the retro brighten on it, and uh, mm, yeah, <laughs> that didn't really work as well as I thought it would. Because I, I did, I did a lot of retro brightening on my uh, G1 Ultra Magnus when I did the restoration on that. So anyway, so I got hold of this guy for thirty quid. Glad to have got him, but obviously I've got to see if I can fix this uh, this this uh, this sun yellowing on him, this sun fading. So there's two ways you can do it. You can try retro brightening it, which is what I've been experimenting with, but it hasn't worked out so well. And the other thing you can do is paint it because the arms are painted and they're not faded at all. So you could just match that colour of grey and just, just paint him and he'd look great. So, yeah, there's a, there's that you can do. But, uh, yeah, got hold of him. And, uh, you know... It's a shame he wasn't in mint condition, but uh, you know the fact that he's I've got one, he's complete, he's got all his, his box accessories. So I suppose 30 quid, I, I'm happy that I got him for 30 quid in the condition that he's in. You know, it could have been a lot worse, but uh, yeah, I'm glad to have got hold of him. So he was a figure that I was after and I managed to get hold of one, so I saw him and got hold of him. Anyway, walking around again, my mate at uh, King Street, you know, the stall, he finally turned up, went to say hello to him, and 
got Transformers Go Senshimaru. So yeah, this is the the final part of the uh, the combiner that you know the uh, is it the Shinobi team from Transformers Go because there's two teams, there's the Samurai team and the Shinobi team. This is from the Shinobi team. It's got like the uh, you know Geki Sumaru, which is the uh, the blue um, you know lion. You then got uh, Hishumaru, which is the orange bird, and then you got uh, Senshumaru, who's the purple shark. Now. Hishimaru is a piece of crap um, because it's one of the. You know, it's, I mean, Geki Sumaru, he's got like the lights and sounds. He's got a, li a lot more engineering going on in his in his in his you know robot mode and alt mode. He's he's really cool. This guy has got the same problem as he as Hishimaru. You look where his hips are. They're right up in his in his you know in his armpits. It's a lot. There's his arm and there's his hips. So he's got that going on, same as the other one. Um, so yeah, he's got these really weird legs. And also he's got these stupidly massive you know, shin pieces, which you can flip round. And they become, they become, they become feet for, for, uh, they come feet from one of the combiners versions because I mean the, these guys they have um, three different variants with the combine the way the combiner combiner gimmick works because there's this um, there's this clip and they they all sort of like clip on top of one another in like a triple decker fashion and. Uh, but um, yeah, anyway, it's it's not that great. It's it's really not that great. But I kind of knew it was going to be like this because he's he's you know he's he's like he's like you know, he's like the orange bird bot. He's he's got the same sort of you know sort of really daft engineering because of the, the way the combiner gimmick works. But I wanted to get it because I want to try the combiner. I haven't done it yet. But I will have a go because there's three different variants of the combiner. You can swap and change the characters to get different sort of versions. And I wanted to give it a go just to see what it was like. And it's from Transformers Go, which is a Japanese exclusive show. It came out, you know, after you know Transformers Prime. It was um, the, uh, most of the line was repaints the Transformers Prime figures, um, well, Prime's Beast Hunters figures. But they did have some original stuff, and this is this is one of it. Um, um, this is pretty rough, but it's it would have been the worst bot this month were it not for you know, Max Dozer, <laughs> the problem I had with him last month. So this guy gets a dishonourable mention because you know he's 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 re he's pretty bad to be honest. And uh, were it not for any other reason, this guy would have been the worst bot I got this month. But um, he's um, he's okay-ish, I suppose. So uh, yeah. So I got hold of that finally and off that bloke. But it was great that Darren from um, King Street Collectibles, you know, was able to help me out with this because uh, I knew he had it. And uh, a little phone call to the guy before the event managed to get things sorted out and it was great. Um, as I was wandering around, oh yeah, yeah, just reminded myself of another thing. Um, as I was wandering around, um, I uh, was uh, decided... I've, I've said a few people have got like mini Autobots, like the uh, the mini G1 Autobots on their stall. So I'm thinking, I oh, know, I want to get hold of a G1 Pipes. So I was wandering around, Space Bridge was there, they had a couple in their glass case. But I'd seen somebody else you know, around the other parts who, who had a, a tub full of you know, mini G1 Autobots on, on their stall. So I went, went back to have a look at that. So when I got to the guy's stall, he was talking to somebody else. And I looked at him and said, I know you guy. And it was um, it was Russ from uh, Toys R Us. He was there running the store. And while I was waiting to talk to him, um, you know, Mr. Zort Rider comes walking up with his lad and starts talking to him. So yeah, I was just I had my mask on because obviously the NEC Toy Fair, even though they've relaxed the rules for the, um, the the COVID, you know, you don't need a COVID pass. You don't need you know you know proof that you've been vaccinated to get into the NEC anymore. Um, you don't need to wear a mask going around the NEC, but yeah. You know, I wanted to wear one anyway 
for the simple reason you, you're going into a big room full of strangers and there's a chance you might catch something so i was just you know sanitizing and wearing my mask just for my own benefit if nothing else you might look a bit stupid doing it but you know it's my life at the end of the day you know i'm trying to save myself from uh, an, uh you know a chronic illness so anyway so yeah i was waiting there for uh <laughs> For, for Zort Rider to finish talking to Russ and then uh, then I took my mask off and then Zort Rider clocked me and it's like oh hello mate <laughs> and then I had a little chat with uh, with Russ at Toys R Us and uh, yeah he was he was great and uh, yeah he was doing a stall he said it was the first time he'd done a stall at uh, the NEC he had, he had a bunch of things on his stall not just Transformers he had a load of other stuff on there as well but uh, I hope he did quite well and hopefully he'll come back to the next one in May be uh, be nice to see him at the next one so yeah he was there, but I didn't manage to get the figure that I wanted off his stall. So I was wandering around, so I went back to the space bridge, and uh, I uh, asked the guy, can you do me a G1 pipes? So uh, he got into the case, he had two in the case, he got one out, he, he got me the one that was the best, best, better of the two. So I got me a G1 pipes. Now, when it comes to pipes and Huffer, Huffer is my main man. I've got all the Huffer moulds. We're just waiting for that Iron Factory one to come out. But pipes. Um, not really interested in pipes. But the thing that's got me interested in this is because of that... Because of the fans' toys, uh, Huffer. Because of the way his shoulders work. I was thinking, well... And the fact that, you know, pipes, the um, the cab goes the opposite way. Because on a Huffer, it, you know, it sits like that. So Huffer's like this way round. And pipes is is that way round. He's the opposite way round to um, to to Huffer, the way that his his transformation works. And his arms are underslung, whereas Huffer's are overslung with this 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 um, this, um, this this shoulder pieces that they've got. And um, so yeah, I just wanted to get you know G1 pipes to see how the mold worked. And uh, yeah, it's all right. It's, it's it's different to Huffer. It obviously works the opposite way round. Interest in engineering the way it works because, you know, it's basically the same transformation, but it just it just works the other way. And there you go, little blue truck. But you know, it's just different how it works and yeah so when the fans toys pipe come pipes comes out it'll have proper shoulders because the shoulder the shoulders are over the arms rather than under the arms which is why you know you know fluoro deary made huffer huffer's you know g1 cartoon design with the, with the sunken shoulders because that's way the, the shoulders worked on the toy but anyway so I, was, I got hold of him. I got him from uh, Space Bridge because they had a stall at the NEC. So that was all right. Yeah, got hold of him. And that's all the bots I got for this month. So uh, one more thing that uh, came at the end of the month. Um, yeah, so Beast Wars issue 14 from uh, RDW. Um, I uh, ordered this at the beginning of the month along with the other comic. But it was from a different seller to the one I got the other comic from. But they said that this comic was coming out at the end of the month. So I was basically pre-ordering it. So I ordered it and it, it, it went through the release date for the comic, which I think was the 23rd past, came and went. And the seller hadn't shipped the item. So I, I contacted him and says, you know, are you going to be, you know, you know, are you going to be shipping that to comic out anytime soon? And he said, he said, well, you know, we only just got our delivery on it on Friday. So I shipped it out and it arrived on the 29th. So yeah, now this issue is really good. Um, the story in this is is based on an episode from the original um, Beast Wars TV show. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it's the one where Optimus gets infected by uh, a virus that was implanted in him by um, by a Tarantulas that that turns him you know sort of super aggressive, and um, yeah, so something happens in this episode. Where uh, you know uh, Tarantulas finds some 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 weird red energon that's that suit that that you know if you inject it into somebody it makes them super aggressive. So um, he, he concocts this um, this this device to you know to to clamp on the back of a 
a maximal that will then explode and infect them with this um, this uh, aggression sort of you know sort of uh, well they say it's radiation but uh, you know it's kind of a thing anyway so they they find um, you know tarantulas and uh, black arachnia find Dinobot and uh, Primal in, in you know messing around in the forest they have a, a very short tussle with all they then implant this device on the back of Dinobot's you know um, uh, beast mode Primal comes in to, to grab it, it goes off, they both get a charge of this red energy on, they get recovered back to the maximal base and they're being, uh, they've been healed. And then all of a sudden Optimus wakes up and he's like, he's like furiously mad and he's like lashing out at everybody. And then they, then uh, Dinopot says, oh, maybe you should go and beat up Megatron. And he's like, so he, he goes, he, de- he runs off to go fight Megatron. And then there's an interesting thing with Megatron gets... He's doing something in the uh, the dark side, and then Waspinator comes in and, and tells him, "Oh yeah, the Maximals have been seen. Come and see." And so he 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 goads, um, he goads um, Megatron out into the wild, and then Megatron's going, "Oh, you, you know, why have you done this? Why have you brought me out here, Waspinator? You know." And and then Waspinator all of a sudden, you know, transforms into Saberback because <laughs> he was like in holograph, and then he he, he blasts um, Megatron and captures him. And then, then it flips to Optimus, who's, who's charging through the forest trying to find Megatron. And then all of a sudden he gets accosted by this massive great polar bear. Polar claw, baby. Polar claw's in this. And the polar claw starts laying into him and he manages to capture Optimus. Now, polar claw and Saberback um, are... Now, if you remember from the last comic where we had that Vok that was trying to you know, hack into... You know, um, into Cheetor's memories when he was in the CR chamber, but getting healed up, and he was trying to steal informational data on the uh, the, the proto forms and the uh, you know the um, and the stasis pods. So they must have intercepted two of the stasis pods, reprogrammed the Maximals inside, i.e. Saberback or the proto forms inside to make Saberback and um, um, Polaclaw, and then they went after the leaders of the two factions, and now they're going to be, you know, running tests on them, and it's so uh, that's going to happen in the next issue. So it was a really cool issue. Um, kind of makes me want to get a Polaclaw now. I've got Saberback, I've got the original Beast Wars Saberback, um, but I haven't got Polaclaw, so <laughs> it kind of makes me want to get a Polaclaw now. Um, it, remember, Polaclaw was hinted on that big um, Kingdom picture they did with all the all the bots on it. Um, yeah, so I wonder if we're going to get a Polar Claw in the Kingdom line. They are doing some weird um, Beast Wars reissues now. I mean, they've got Cyber Shark and what was the other one? The uh, the Wolf one that they're doing? Yeah, so they might reissue Polar Claw for all we know. <laughs> we don't know, but uh, anyway. So I enjoyed this comic a lot less than the last one. The last one was kind of a setup for this one. With the whole Vox stealing the information, and then using it to create these, you know, these, these sort of Vox agent, you know, Maximals to to go after the leaders. But uh, it was, it was, it was really good. I mean, you, you know, you can see the Vox in the background. Look, you see the Vox face there. Look, um, yeah. So it's quite interesting what's going on with this. Um, like I said, because IDW is going to be losing the license, I don't know how many issues this comic's got left. Probably about well, how many more months is there in the year now? So we're in, uh, so this is a technically March's one. So April, May, June, July, August. So we've probably got about eight or nine months left. Eight or nine issues of this left. So 20, issue 22 will be the last one. I don't know. I'll have to wait and see. Anyway, so that's that. And that's my haul. Like I said, it's not very many. I mean, this video still run out to like 50 odd minutes. Um... Yeah, <laughs> but you know, you know how I like to chat. Anyway, so um, end of month bot haul. I bought a bunch of stuff. Um, first and worst. Um, the worst is pretty obvious. Like I said, this guy booked his worst spot last month <laughs> before I even bought it. So yeah, he's the worst bot. The first wasn't quite so clear cut. I didn't really have many bots that were really, really great. Um, there's a couple of possible candidates. The rest of the bots were like, meh, you know. But, I think I have to. First, 
first and worst. So it it, it kind of has to be Gold Rex Rescue or Rescue Rex because even though I much prefer the orange original, this version is still a great toy. It's better than anything else I got this month. It's it's bigger, it's cooler looking. It's a robot, big rob, robotic dragon that transforms out of an off-road vehicle. So, you know, there's two things I like about it already. He's great, though he's kind of getting the, the best spot by default because there's nothing else that's, that's better than he is, in my opinion. As for... <laughs> as for Max Dozer, well, yeah, <laughs> we all know what happened there. I got screwed over last month trying to buy one of these out of a seller on G Market. That really upset me, and I actually get the toy in hand this month. I'm not a fan of the way it looks, and yeah, coupled to that, all the grief I had last month trying to get hold of this thing, and it's uh, yeah. Even though it's not a bad toy, really, it's it's kind of all right. You know the the whole you know you know. The whole reason I bought these was because of the uh, the swap and change nature of the uh, the Samba gimmick, which is really cool. I've got all the base Samba bots, just need to get the combiner now, and that's it. I can uh, draw a line under Hello Carbot Season 11, and uh, yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah, first and worst, two KTRTs, <laughs> so what does that tell you? Anyway, that's been me, TFI Wilderness, hopefully this video is under an hour, which it should be. And uh, game starts again tomorrow. Um, I've already got a couple of things I want to buy. Like I said, there's, there's some Korean figures I want to pull the trigger on. Um, uh, there's a few other bits and pieces I'll, I'm sort of looking at getting. So, moving on, moving on to April. Bring it on. I'm in Two Wilderness. I'll catch you all next time. Ta da.